Howdy, folks. It's Jake here at the Bone Giller Lease, and I've lost, lost my son Otto. Does anyone? <laughs> oh, hey, there he is. Hey, buddy. I'm going to show you my. You can't catch me. Look at all this feed, guys. We've uh, just left, let the mob here into a bigger paddock, a lot bigger than what I'd like to graze, but. Mrs. Wolke's hand injury has proven to be more serious than we thought, and she's going in for an ultrasound today and uh, meeting with a specialist tomorrow potentially for surgery to open it up and, and flush it, and they've given her intravenous antibiotics, and uh, that's put a lot of acid back onto me with uh, managing the household and the kids, which is fine. That's what you do as a family. I'm not begrudging that at all. But it just leaves me thin on our lease block. So I've come here. I was going to cut this paddock probably into four moves um, over the next three three weeks or so. But I've just had to open it up and I'll give them probably the same three weeks on the whole thing. It's not great uh, grazing to the level that we try to hold ourselves to. But you know, with our limited labour force uh, and workload, it's just something that we have to do. But I thought I'd give you a quick look at the, the condition of these animals. They're just really starting to shine. And this property is just an absolute chocolate block over this time of year. Spring down here, it's just beautiful. They say plant pebbles grow boulders. But look at the look how full and fat these animals are getting. That one there is an interesting animal. That is a Jersey and Goonie steer. Uh, and if you compare it there to the... Short horn and goonie steers, you can see it's definitely a smaller framed animal, but it'll eat great, I'm sure. And here we've got, I'll zoom in there. That background, see that scorched earth hill? That's the neighboring block, that's not us. Look how fat that jersey is, folks. It's got good milk production there. Look how fat she is. You can't even see a rib on her. Have you ever seen a jersey like that? I've got a bunch of them here on grass. No grain. These guys are optimised for grain milking environments. Look at that one. Look how fat they are. They're the calves. One of them's rearing twins. The calves are beautiful. We'll go down. We'll chase them down and I'll show you the calves. They're so... I don't know how to describe them. Real supple and deep. Yeah, they're the best. I, I bred some Jersey Cross and Goonies out of my Red Bull Bombu. And they were fine, but they were very leggy. Um, and and Bombu's a sort of a slighter build than Kaya, I guess. He's not as well muscled. Kaya's definitely a standout bull. Uh, and these are side by Kaya, and the calves are just so much better. And you can't blame it all on the uh, great amount of feed here because the first few months those calves had on the ground was very ordinary. It's been very dry. We haven't had much rain, and I'm, you know, geez, I'm probably understocked on this farm. This, this paddock here is half the farm. Uh, in term, or probably more than half the farm in terms of uh, land mass and um, pasture and everything. But we do have some poor boy fences I've built in here. So we do, and we've got water plumbed in, so we can strip graze them down here. Look at this. Just look at it. It's already, look, it's falling over on the weight of itself and creating a mat on the ground. Look at that ground cover. See, that's this season. And then under that, we've got last season, Otto. Look at that. Look at all the roots. It's cool. Feel it, Otto? It's cool. Mm. And it's not wet. I wouldn't even call it damp, but it's not dry. We haven't had any rain for weeks. Just beautiful. Oh, I wish, yeah, I wish all the blocks looked like this, but this one I D, this one we got into trouble the most over that dry winter autumn that I keep talking about, so I destocked it pretty hard pretty aggressively and then um, I've restocked it since not with stacks of animals but with enough I just brought some steers here from another block <coughs> good boy hey Otto could you could you chain that up so the cattle can't get in mm. and I'll, I'll get started walking back show some people on the YouTubes some of these animals yeah like I said it's not the way we'd love to be grazing optimally but and my new guy who's helping me out at Thaguna I think it won't be too long and hopefully he'll be able to help me up help me out with some of these grazings but 
he's like just new and he hasn't had any livestock experience and we're just trying to bit of practice for him at home on the home block where he lives closer to you to figure out fencing and handling livestock I just don't have much time to put into him at the moment so it's not very fair to ask him to do too much out here but we'll get up here and I'll show you what these jersey cross calves look like now a few people ask me why we use jerseys a few reasons guys the first reason is that they're cheap they're being sold out of the dairies they're being culled out of the dairies 900 bucks thousand bucks a cow and if you tell the dairy what you want to do it do with it they'll give you healthy ones see they cull for all sorts of reasons recurring mastitis and other illnesses and whatever else but they also just cull for infertility and infertility in a dairy might be they miss two ai cycles because they're using sex semen to breed through artificial insemination and From the, uh, we've done three sets of joinings and preg tests with those cull jerseys that were infertile. And the last lot, it was a two month joining with Kaya. It was an 84% conception rate. And then we just process the empties through the butchery and make beautiful beef. Jersey beef is just in a league of its own as far as I'm concerned. Look how fat she is. This is a little heifer and she's actually barren. So. These couple here will be going for processing pretty soon, probably next week actually. Time to get on the block, my darling. You've had a good life. And that one behind was born on our place. Sometimes you buy these choppers, these infertile dairy cows, and they actually come pregnant. Little happy accidents get through the get through the cracks. This Hereford heifer here is going for processing as well. We're sending four through, so those two jerseys. And this Hereford, she's fat. She's fat, and she'll keep growing. If we keep, we could hold her another year. She'd put another 100 something kilos on, like no problems, they just get bigger and bigger, but much bigger than this, and the butchers will spit the lid. Too heavy a carcass to handle, because everything's manual on the rail. So we'll finish them while they're fat, put them through and keep the butchers happy. Who else will we send? Maybe you. It's a bit morbid, isn't it, to walk around and tell them they're all going to the block. Maybe we'll stop that language. They might understand us, I do. Okay. Oh, look, she got two back teats. Yeah, she's got little fake teats there. There's another Jersey cross. Crazy looking thing. Anyway, here's these calves. Have a look at them. Let go, please, Otto. So these little calves here, look at them go. That, folks, is a Jersey and Goonie first cross. Beautiful little calves, all of them here. That grey one there is Nguni out of a square metre. That cow there, big roomy cow. But look at these guys. They've actually got a very square sort of body on them, don't they? Interesting calves. And we'll breed out of them. So they're a first cross. We'll take the, we'll fatten the steers and we'll breed the heifers. We'll get our second cross, third cross, and then end up at fourth cross, which people would understand to be close enough to pure. The five cross. This calf here looks a bit poor. Just looks rough, doesn't it, Otto? Bit ribby and should put on weight pretty quick though with all this feed in front of it that's a second cross so it's a little bit a little bit interesting to see it not doing well it's been scratched up the back there it must be getting picked on a bit here's kaya we'll have a quick bull check and then we've got to go back to the faguna farm do some jobs there hey kaya how are you going big boy aren't you a aren't you a picture yeah look at that tail the Nguni tail, so much dexterity. It's just a lazy whip and a crack and it lands exactly where they want. Get rid of those flies. He is just clean. I just think he's such a fantastic bull. I'm gonna move him up to the house block to join our heifer mob in two weeks. 
two to three weeks he'll be coming up. And uh, once he's impregnated our heifers, I'm going to be sending him up to Holbrook, not far, 20 minutes up the road, to a business that specialises in milking semen out of your bulls. And we'll be putting a heap of Kaya's semen on ice and uh, keeping it up our sleeve is a little bit of a future insurance policy. I think he's a fantastic no, specimen fantastic. of an Inguni bull. Doesn't do anything to Kaya. Just means if he dies, we can we can still theoretically use him in the future. We can breed the cows with his energy stored in a tube, or we can sell it to other people. So if there's somebody somewhere else in Australia that wants to use Kaya as their bull, but they, we can't get the bull all the way to him, they can order his semen and use it on their cows with a vet. And does that breed them? It breeds them. It's the same, you know how he jumps on the bulls and breeds them? Well, it's just like doing that without him being there. Rightio guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.